Well, 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 it has to come to an end. Hello, guys, welcome to the finale. The grand finale of Soyi. It has been a hot minute, let me tell you that. It has been a while since I've started this project. I think uh, first ideas came around in February and I think in March I contacted guys and uh, it has been something else. Like, viewer-wise, it was um, not good, <laughs> to tell you that. But fun-wise and getting to know all of those great people that are now residing on my Discord as well and um, having met all of them, it is has been very, very fun. And I want to thank each and every one of those creators and uh, I'm not going to tell you all of them. They are all in the description linked. Um, you have seen all of them in action if you watched the whole series. And if I count them out of my head, I'm probably going to miss one. So that's really it. And I want to thank you, the viewer, for watching. Because that series has been really fun to make. And I hope with today's finale, we can give it a good closure, some good closure. So let's get into game number match number one, which is the third place match between myself and Biennas. So um, without further ado, let's hop into it. Of course, we are having the championship bracket background and look at my hand all spell cards but luckily i can go off with a fusion destiny combo and looking at bienna's hand he has no way of stopping me at least not as of right now i get back my shadow mist which triggers the search for a second mask change which is important having a dread decimate on board two mask change set well he clears one i get my dark law out and there's Imperm. Imperm stops the Dark Law from activating, but look at that. I have another one and I can go into a second Dark Law. Then he has the Signet Codec and he re realizes no way of playing around a Dark Law on board. So I take game one very, very quickly. Game two, he goes first and uh, he activates one for one, brings out the Microcoder, goes into Bailings, activates X Seed in hand, activates X Seed effect bring out the second one linking them off into splash mage and i crow the microcoder he then goes into transcode talker brings back the splash mage sets two and passes i think i hit the right one here my regeki is good getting rid of both transcode talker and splash mage and then the increase comes out and attacks for 900 he top decks an ash blossom which is let me tell you it's not good then there is the increase and I get out the mask change going to Dark Law and the Dark Law, well, it doesn't get hit, but the search gets ashed because I wanted to search the Honest Neos. He top decks a code generator and surrenders the game. I'm up to zero. We are going to game three and Bienas is going first again. Lady Debug is a very good start and looking at my hand, this is a very shitty hand with Malicious and Plasma in hand. You don't want to see that, at least not if you're going second. He has a lot of stuff uh, he can use. Uh, of course, the balance a lot. Format Skipper going into the Transcode Talker. There is the Code Talker Inverted, activating the Chiriatic Nista. Splash Mage comes out. And if you see the structure that he's going for, there's a shooting code and a firewall dragon, which all of them are co-linked, so it's hard to break. I go into Dangerous, activate the Shadow Mist to search the Ferris. I pitch the Malicious and get out the increase. There's Vion. Plasma negates all field effects, but Synod Conflict banishes my plasma which has been it was my plan all along to go into the uh, it was my plan to go in all along to the plasma but i couldn't get rid of it i strike uh, his access code but he still has enough to take me down so i surrender this game i'm going first because i want to set up a dark law as quick as possible but my hand is 
hot garbage. So I just can set a torrential and I want to keep it. I want to keep it until a very crucial moment. There's backup secretary going into the inver code talker inverted. The Cynet codec is, it's doing work here. And now I torrential. So the code talker stays up there, but he has the monster reborn and he can trigger the balancer lord and that makes him completely unaffected by my effect and he has the cold by the grave to stop my ash blossom which he had an answer to everything so it's not looking too good bringing out the update jammer there's a token link spider there's trigate wizard and there is the access code can he bring out enough damage to kill me this turn it of course he does of course we have an all-important game five and i'm going first and my hand again is shit like i had so bad hands in the three games in a row i can't stop the lady debug and he sets one pass i'm, I'm a bit hoping to get a good top deck i get the reed rotor the vion banishes a malicious and he has a skullmeister that stops malicious but i still can go into the sunrise sunrise brings me miracle fusion F miracle fusion activates there's eskri dao and i can hit in unfortunately for not enough damage because the book of moon books my eskri dao and i hit indirectly with sunrise for 27 and he has a second lady debug in hand and you know lady debug is full combo actually <sighs> Signet optimization, there's a dotscaper, bailings. I think I have a torrential set here. Let me just check real quick. It is a torrential. And I want to keep it very long because my monsters here are very good. And then there's access code and I forgot I cannot respond to the access code. <sighs> and that makes me lose this game because I waited too long to pull the trigger and clear the board. So in the end, Bienas takes it. So we go into the finale. Bienas is third place, that is clear. I am fourth place and for me that is A-OK. -okay. That's actually what I wanted to achieve. Like top four was my plan and my hoping to get there. I lost in the semi in the quarterfinals, so I was kinda like a bit bummed out. I had the chance again and I took it, so I'm actually happy about how it came down. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel, because around 50% of you are not, if you're watching this, I would highly suggest and would be thankful if you would do click that button, because if you do, that motivates me and, well, makes you so you don't forget any uploads or miss any uploads and if you ring the bell you're even notified so that's even better think of it you're looking sitting on the toilet nothing is there then you get the notification a Corian uploaded a video how good would that be like tell me okay um i kind of lost myself there we go into the finale which is levi from heart of the bards against tcg wolf i hope you are ready i hope you have snacks ready maybe you already hydrated yourself because stay hydrated and we go into the finale wolf going first and i can see uh i think it's a mediocre hand the terraforming gives himself the meltdown which is actually kind of going into alistair with it was telegraphing that the invocation there's a window activating the trigger effects or the graveyard effects of his bow's shadows there's Win windy's Wendy's effect. No, Winda is on the field, Wendy is in the grave. <laughs> so many. <laughs> um, Infinite Impermanence comes out and that stops the Winda. That is very, very good. Normal summon Alistair and not using Invocation because he wanted to overlay into Dryden popping the Winda, which is pretty smart if you, s if you tell me. Wolf then flips the beasts, which is the beast which draws him too. The Dragon Pop clears the back row. And the beast hit into the trident, which activated and detached. And the incarnation brings back the winder in defense, which is easy to hit over. The trident then pops the magical meltdown. And Levi hits over the winder and hits into the Wendy, which sets the Falco. And there comes out a, uh, 
Nefarious Archfiend Eater of Nefariousness. And Wolf uh, actually mm, blossomed the Gigabyte. Did he? There's an Ogwadis, at least, on the field, and one set, which is Falco. He flips up that set, and that sets a Squamata. Wolf sets another one, sets a third one, and passes to Levi. Levi normal summons Alistar, links them off into Appaloosa, and activates Invocation. The Invocation gets uh, responded with the Incarnation. Still, Levi gets the Mecha Bar, Squamata effect, but that gets negated by the... Um, the Appaloosa and the damage gets negated by the damage juggler in hand damage juggler banishes itself but Appaloosa negates flip up the beast, draw two but Mechaba negates and then there is a Shadow Fusion and Ash Blossom negates wow so many chain links and negates here and the last negate from Appaloosa which is enough to take the dragon and hit over it. But there is a mecha bar on the other side of the field, which is bigger than the dragon. So Levi hits over the dragon. It is turn nine and Wolf has to set an Ash Blossom. <laughs> okay, terraforming, which we have seen before, but Levi goes for the secret village of the spellcasters. Then Normal summons Alistair, gets the invocation and hits in for a thousand direct. Wolf top decks Alistair and hits into the other Alistair crashing. And then when the Awakening of the Possessed, I think it is that activates, Wolf just surrenders because there's no way he is getting out of there. Game two, now Levi going first, activates Mad, uh, Awakening of the Possessed. Okay, it was not Awakening of the Possessed, what I talked about in the first game. There is Awakening of the Possessed, the nefarious Archfiend Eater Boy. It's freaking hamster. My god. Again, terraforming, magical meltdown, Alistar. Alistar gets met with an Ash Blossom. Uh, not an Ash Blossom, but with an Effect Veiler. So he is practically a thousand attack body on the board. It was teamwork of the possessed. Cool. Now I learned something. And look at that damage that Levi has on the board and hitting into TCG Wolf for. Not game, because Damage Juggler is in hand. It's Wolf's turn, but he top decks a Garnet. Oh my god. <sighs> Normal summon the Hedgehog, and there wants, the Head Tracker wants to come out, but gets messed with a Solemn Warning, so Levi definitely had game on board here. It's game three. Is it going to be a three game match? And Masters of the Spiritual Arts sets a, a trap card, uh, Awakening of the Possessed, brings out area, setting to, and pass. Wolf activates invocation, gets met with the warning. So negated. Activating the Shadow Fusion, negated. Setting to, pass. Levi top decks a Gigabyte, which is fairly big, hits into the Wendy, which sets a Hedgehog, and the area hits into the Hedgehog which gives Wolf a Shadow Fusion, but Levi overlays into Dryland, and Wolf top decks the Feather Duster, which is very good for him, activates the uh, Fusion, brings out Construct, activates the Trigger Effects in Grave, setting a... Uh, is it an Aerial? Links off into a uh, Cross Sheep, and yeah, it was Aerial, I'm correct. Brings back the Construct set, links off into Redder Plan Verte Anaconda and activating the Imperm on Dryden, which is very, 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 very necessary. Out comes Dragoon, which clears the Dryden and Wolf can hit in for a lot of damage, leaving Levi with 2,500, who top decks a win, activating the Awakening, which gets negated and destroyed by the Dragoon, and that is game for Wolf. We have a game four on our hand and Wolf is going first. Looking at that hand, he, again, he has Dark Magician and Shadow Fusion. He has Dark Magician, Red Eyes, Black Dragon. I mean that, sorry, not the Shadow Fusion. That is actually a good card. But again, Alistair get met with an Ash Blossom. So it's not Alistair's day today. There is a second one which gets normal summoned and Solemn Warning. Wolf sets one, <laughs> cannot do much. 
Levi, on the other hand, can normal summon the Alistair and get the invocation, so... <laughs> he's playing invoke better because it works. Foolish Burial dumps Wendy and I think it was Squamata and the effect of Wendy gets met with the Solemn Warning and it's back to Levi who has a lot of damage. Can he, can Wolf stop it? He cannot. We have a champion. And we crown our champion today, which is Levi from Heart of the Bards. He is the winner of maybe the first Sohi Cup. It was the first sealed only Yu-Gi-Oh! Invitational and I'm proud that it's over because we finished it. It was not like we ended the tournament, it was like it took a longer break. But in the end we have a winner which is Levi. It could have been a double win for the Heart of the Bards brothers. Ben just didn't make it in game 5 in the Constellation Bracket, which is a bit sad because that would have been really cool, but it is what it is. So, it's the end. I hope you enjoyed the series. All hail to King Levi, who is the champion, and thanks to all the other creators. Wolf, congratulations on a good bracket, on a good run. Also, Biennas, also everyone who participated and who is happy with our result. And I thank you so much for watching. I don't want to drag it any longer than it already is, because those videos are really um, vocal cord heavy. <laughs> I'm doing them on one take, like no two takes at all. And I hope you enjoy them. I hope you're ready for the beginning of the next series, which starts next week on Saturday, the same time that this video had its premiere. This first video will have a premiere. Otherwise, I'm not going to publish uh, the episodes of Boss Rush with a premiere anymore. Maybe I will do from, from time to time if something important happens, but I won't do every video from now as a premiere. I really enjoy doing them if there are people watching them and after my longer break I think there aren't so many who are interested in premieres. So if you are let me know in the comments down below and thank you so much. I hope to see you in the next video and thank you for watching Zoe. See you then. Bye bye.